We are about to make your life so much easier. You've been making your Disney World vacation a lot harder than it needs to be, and it's time to relax and hit the easy button here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Disney World trips can start feeling overcomplicated if you're not careful. So today we've got a whole bunch of super easy and super accessible tips that you can apply to your upcoming trip to make things a lot smoother. We got tips for shopping, for reservations, for avoiding crowds when they just feel too stifling. So hang tight and feel the pressures of travel easing up from your shoulders. To make things even easier on you, we got an entire PDF of today's list all typed up and ready to send to your inbox. I know, right? So easy. All you gotta do is drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash easy tricks and we'll get that list sent over to you pronto. All right, let's start with something that a lot of people don't even think about, but can make your life so much easier, especially since you can't send your purchases back to your hotel room right now. You can rent a locker. All right, don't want to lug all your park bags around all day. Are you planning on buying a lot of souvenirs? You need a place to keep them safe. Locker rentals are available at the front of each of the Disney parks, which also includes the water parks. You have two sizes to choose from. A small locker is going to cost $10 per day, and a large locker will cost $12 per day, or $15 if you're renting at Disney's Typhoon Lagoon. Magic Kingdom and Epcot also have a third locker option, the Jumbo Locker, for $15 per day. Lockers are sold on a first-come, first-served basis. The main downside of these lockers, however, is that they're non-transferable. So if you're planning on park hopping later on, you'll have to rent a different locker at your second park of the day. Well, obviously you'll rent a different locker. It'll be in a different place, but you can't sort of transfer the purchase over to another park if that's something you're wanting to do. So you'd have to basically spend $15 in Magic Kingdom and then $15 again in Epcot if you park hop or whatever. That's kind of how it works. So let's say you're going to Disney World with a giant group of people. Maybe all the cousins decided to get together. You're traveling with a bunch of band kiddos or your partner wants you to take a trip with their extended family. Whatever the case may be, you're pushing the double digit headcount. Disney restaurants don't have a whole lot of accommodations for giant groups. They'll have a few elongated tables here and there at some restaurants, but they don't have an overabundance of those. So you might find booking a restaurant anywhere to be a whole lot more difficult than it would be for a family of three to four. If that's the case, break up the group. Instead of booking a table for a group of eight, try making two reservations for groups of four. Or if you get a group of 10, try a group of four and a group of three and another group of three. This isn't a foolproof method, but finding multiple reservations for smaller parties could be easier for you in the long run than trying to track down one big table to fit everybody. And if you want to still try to keep the whole group together, here are a couple of restaurants that are better to accommodate those large groups. Beer Garden at Epcot is a German style buffet with live polka music and dancing and giant communal tables that you can fill up with your own group of people. And Hoop Dee Doo Musical Review at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground is an all you care to enjoy dinner show, so get ready for singing and dancing and lots of laughs. The restaurant provides big tables and plenty of limitless comfort foods and bottomless drinks. There are also a few long tables over at Ohana in Disney's Polynesian Village Resort. Now, though beer garden reservations are usually easier to snag, you will need to jump on the hoop doo reservation just as soon as they open up 60 days before your trip, since those book up fast. By the way, if you are traveling with a big group, don't be afraid to split folks up when you want to do different things in the parks too. Not everybody is going to want to ride all the thrill rides. Not everybody is going to want to ride. It's a small world. So do that extra planning before you go and figure out when it makes sense to split up the groups into the thrill riders and the people who just want to hang out at the pool cabana for the day, right? And then everybody's happy. Next on our list is wearing easy to spot shirts for your family. If you want to make sure you're not pulling a home alone move on anyone in your group because no Kevins should be left behind, then try getting bold and bright matching family tees that are easy to spot in those major crowds. May I recommend our super awesome family tees? Cause I'm gonna, cause they are so much fun and they are really getting a lot of positive response from so many of our viewers and readers. I mean, how can you not get excited about sporting all the magical lands and magic kingdom or claiming your group group as the winners of all things Disney or showing off all the awesome rides you're going to ride. All of these designs plus lots more can be found on merch.dfbstore.com and make sure to keep watching this video because we've got lots more great family tips as well. 
Next on our list is mailing purchases home. Okay, let's say you bought something big at Disney, like really big. So big that you're kind of nervous about squeezing it into your suitcase or attempting to get it back on the plane. You can always use Disney's home delivery services to get your souvenirs sent safely to your house via UPS or FedEx. Just let the cast member behind the register know that you'd like to send your merchandise home and they'll get you all set up with the paperwork to make that happen. Deliveries are gonna cost you some extra cash, which all depends on the weight of your particular souvenir. The heavier, the pricier, but this could still end up being a cheaper and easier method to getting those major purchases back home in one piece without them taking up a whole lot of room on the plane ride back home or messing with you for the rest of the day in the park. Next on the list, mailing letters to Santa. Now this is a smaller delivery service, but it could make the biggest impact for your kids. And get this, it's completely free and available all year round. When you're in Magic Kingdom, head over to Yield Christmas Shop on Liberty Square, and on the windowsill of the shop, you'll see a sled filled with paper and crayons. Kids are more than welcome to write a letter to Santa here, and once they've got all their holiday wishes written out for the jolly man himself, they can drop their cart in the red Christmas mailbox next to the letter station. Rest assured, Disney will get those wish lists sent straight to Mr. Kringle so his elves can start preparing that festive gift, which will look great under the tree come December 25th. Now, does this make your Disney trip easier? I guess not really, but it's super cool, and I think your kids are really gonna like it. All right, next, wearing a celebration button. Since we're already on the subject of free things, don't forget to pick up your free celebration button at the front desk of your hotel or at one of the guest service locations at any of the Disney parks. The celebration buttons cover a variety of special occasions like birthdays, graduations, honeymoons. You can even grab a more generic I'm celebrating button and fill in the special occasion yourself. Celebration buttons aren't just a fun and super cheap souvenir, but they can also hook you up with some free goodies sometimes. Make sure to wear them during your Disney sit down meal because you never know when you'll be surprised with a free celebratory dessert. But know that they're not guaranteed, so don't get upset if you don't get one. Next way to make life so easy for yourself is checking that website calendar for park hours right before you go. You don't have to learn about park hours the day you arrive at your Disney hotel, but you gotta love the resort TV loop with all its musical satisfying glory. You can actually learn about park hours way in advance by heading to the Disney World website, checking out that month by month calendar. Sometimes hours may be way shorter than you were expecting, like when there's a separate ticketed after hours holiday party happening, or there's a special training or private reservation scheduled for a particular night, because people can rent out the whole park. Parks have the potential of closing as early as 5 or 6 p.m., which means no nighttime fireworks spectaculars, and that could make you feel cheated out of your Disney day if that's the day you decide to go to that park. So don't find yourself caught off guard when you're being asked to skedaddle on out of there before you've had a chance to grab dinner. On the other hand, you might find days when the parks are open later than you were expecting, which can be a very nice surprise. Usually select days throughout the summer have longer park hours for guests, which means you want to keep an eye out for when the 2023 summer calendar goes live on the site. The month-by-month -month calendar is also where you're going to find the extended evening hours info since the parks will stay open one to two hours later for deluxe resort guests on certain nights throughout the week. Park hours are normally revealed about two to three months out at a time, so don't forget to check back in periodically before you book your tickets. Also, know that park hours can change. Things can change based on staffing concerns or private rentals, things like that. So definitely check back, look at the hours. If Disney knows those are going to be very, very busy days, they may extend the hours. And that's really good to know. All right, next on our list is keeping track of when to book your next Lightning Lane. Now this is a brand new addition to Walt Disney World's My Disney Experience, and it is super, super useful. It makes your day a lot easier. So some folks can get a little perturbed when they hear they can only book one Lightning Lane at a time with their $15 per person per day Genie Plus purchase. But that doesn't mean you can't stack up those Lightning Lanes throughout the day. For those of you who are new to the Lightning Lane scene, since it's still a fairly new system that was introduced to the parks last year, Lightning Lanes give you the ability to bypass a good chunk of an attraction's main queue line in exchange for a much shorter queue line, helping you save time during your Disney day. So it's important to know how often you can book new Lightning Lanes in order to really get your money's worth out of this premium feature. You're gonna be able to book your next Lightning Lane when one of the following things happens. One, you use the Lightning Lane you've already got reserved. Seriously, as soon as you scan in to get in line, you can immediately jump onto the app and make your next reservation. Two, you cancel the one you already had. Bye-bye, Lightning Lane, 
trading in for a new model now. And three, 120 minutes have passed since the last time you made a Lightning Lane reservation. So let's say it's noon and you make a resi for Rock and Roller Coaster at Disney's Hollywood Studios with a return window between 4 and 5 p.m. So you made it at noon, and when 2 p.m. rolls around, you'll be able to book another Lightning Lane, even though you haven't gotten a chance to use that first one yet. Disney Genie will make keeping track of this 120 minute time period easier by keeping tabs on what time exactly you can head back into the planning tool to book your next ride. You'll be able to find this time on a banner at the top of the tip board section. All right, all this waiting in lines and running around is quite the workout. Is it even possible to cool down when you're constantly standing in the sun all day long? Well, consider investing in non-conventional ways to keep cool. Luckily, we're right now, when this video is getting published, we're kind of moving into... I don't know, I guess eventually it'll get cooler in Orlando here in the next couple of weeks or months. But don't worry, summer will be back before you know it. And it is absolutely atrociously hot in Orlando in the summer. You know Florida gets hot and you probably already have your sunscreen, your sunglasses, your refillable water bottles packed and ready to go, I hope. But double check for those just in case. But what are some ways to beat the heat that maybe you haven't considered before? Well, here are a few that are easy to pack, easy to order, and easy to use. By the way, we've tested all of these and they are all pretty useful. First up is those UV umbrellas. Usually we're busy packing umbrellas to prep for rain, but UV umbrellas are made with a reflective fabric to help you keep from getting sunburned. Not to mention they give you an on the go shady spot to help keep you cool. You can find UV umbrellas on websites like Target or Amazon and normally prices range between 22 and 50 bucks depending on your design. Now, cooling towels are next on our list. Those are like damp scarves. You soak them and wear them around your neck. And if you're not a fan of having a slightly moist shirt all day long, you may not wanna go this route. But if you're looking for a fairly inexpensive way to keep cool, these towels are sold online and in many big box and drug stores. They're also sold at Disney World, but they're exorbitantly expensive there, of course. Now, when I went to Disney World last summer for food and wine festival, so in the middle of July, I packed both a cooling towel and those kind of around the neck fan things that everybody's wearing. And I will tell you that the cooling towel definitely won out. The fan was fun and it was great until it ran out of battery pretty much right away. The cooling towels are light and portable and you can just dunk them in free ice water all day long and wrap them around your neck and totally revive yourself and the cooling towel. So those are pretty great. Next on our list is regular towels. No, you're not going to be taking a dip in a pool while you're in the parks, though Kali River Rapids at Disney's Animal Kingdom might feel like you have after a ride. But if you're wearing shorts and you decide to pop a squat on one of those outdoor benches or chairs, those can burn the back of your legs. You don't have to stuff a giant bag with tons of towels or anything, but having one or two hand towels on hand could be useful. And those can also double as cooling towels if you need them to. Now, you might not like this next advice, but believe me, it is going to make your Disney trip easier. And that's go early. So what's the simplest trick to get as much done in the parks as possible? Wake up. But seriously, lots of people step into Disney World property and immediately enter vacay mode, meaning they don't want to wake up before the parks do, or they know their kids are going to need the extra Z's to actually make it through a full day. And both are completely valid reasons to keep on snoozing. I too am a fan of Shut Eye on vacation. But if your number one goal is to hit up the rides before those lines get super long, or you just want to walk around the parks in general without breathing in someone else's personal space, those early wake up calls are going to do wonders. Even better is when you take advantage of the early theme park entry benefit, which allows all Disney World Resort guests to enter any of the parks on any day, 30 minutes before the parks officially open. Now remember, if you do stay in a Disney World hotel and want to take advantage of a wake-up call, you may be surprised who's calling to wake you up. Sometimes it's Mickey, sometimes it's another friend, but that may serve as a little bit of motivation to get you out of bed. All right, sometimes the easiest tricks are the ones that totally slip our minds, especially when it comes to packing. So our next tip to make your life so much easier, use bags with zippers. <laughs> now hear me out, there are some super cute tote bags and purses out there with an open top, or that have a single button keeping it fastened in place. Those bags look stylish, but they're not the best park bags ever. I mean, think about all the rides that demand you quickly shove your bags underneath your seat or in coaster pouches attached to the seats in front of you. 
Open bags can lead to accidental lost items that just so happen to escape when you're retrieving your bags. It's also nice to have bags with zippers just in case Orlando drops one of their infamous afternoon rainstorms on you. So what are our favorite bags? Well, we've got a bunch of suggestions on our website. Go check them out. But the truth is that everybody has a different type of bag that works for them that they like. The only thing we're saying here is make sure it closes at the top so you don't lose stuff in the park. Now, how can Disney still be easy to navigate when you're starting to feel under par? Well, here's how. You gotta know where to get the over-the-counter meds. Just when you think your Disney World vacation is going swimmingly, you're struck with a pounding headache, or your kid trips and scrapes up their elbows, or you got off Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind and your stomach is protesting. The first aid centers located in Disney parks have a team of full-time nurses ready to help get you back to feeling a okay again. Definitely, definitely make use of those first aid centers if you need to. Best of all, this service is completely free. They have lots of over-the-counter meds that they can get for you. If you're starting to feel a little dehydrated or maybe a little dizzy or just not feeling great, stop into the first aid center. They have places where you can sit down. They'll give you some water. You can get some AC and relax a little bit. This is a great place to kind of get your feet back under you before you head back out in the parks because dehydration is a very, very real thing in Disney World. It happens to all of us. And once you get that dehydration headache, it is not going away for days. All right, next, when it comes to some of those simple tricks, you're gonna have to do a little extra homework to pull them off, but don't worry, this is fun homework. Make sure you learn about limited release items before you arrive. That's right, we're talking shopping. There are times when you may show up on a Disney World vacation and see other guests sporting a new backpack or a pair of mini ears or even Disney themed Crocs that you just gotta have. But if you find out said items were only available for a short amount of time and are already sold out, that can be a bummer. So how can you learn about Disney merch drops before they happen? Well, there are a few ways and they all happen online. Number one, check the Shop Disney website. They will usually advertise new or upcoming releases on the top of their homepage. They may even have them available on their website, which could save you money over purchasing them directly in the parks if there's an online promo or a sale or a deal going on. If you're looking for brand new park items that have already released, there's a section on Shop Disney for that too, so you can get some virtual window shopping done. Number two, you can jump to the Disney Parks website. They got a whole merch section talking about the products they're super excited to see hitting the parks. And that includes designer mini ears, new 50th anniversary souvenirs, character inspired accessories, etc, etc. And you can also, of course, head to the DFB website. We'll tell you all about the latest merch releases that are about to happen or have already happened in the parks throughout our news posts. That way you don't fall behind on any special merchandise drops. Also, don't forget to join our newsletter. That way we send all that information straight to you and you don't even have to do any homework. All you have to do is open our newsletter and it's right in there for you. If you wanna sign up, it is completely free and the link to subscribe is in the description below. Okay, so this is so much information. Don't give up on your Disney dreams yet. We've got a lot more to go and you've got lifelines available. So the next easy trick on our list here is using a travel agent. So relying on someone else to help you plan a Disney World vacation, someone who knows everything about it, might seem intimidating at first, but those reliable, diamond level authorized travel agents whose whole job is literally to focus on making Disney vacation planning as stress-free as possible can feel like a godsend when you're struggling to apply resort discounts or track down dining reservations. Now you've heard me talk about small world vacations before and we're gonna do it again because they're incredible and very, very useful. First off, it's a free service. So, you know, already good to start there. Secondly, small world agents can compare offers to figure out which deals will end up saving you the most money in the end. Again, love that. Third, this team is really professional. They're quick to reply. They can answer whatever questions you have. And this is all they do. This is not like a part-time side hustle for these agents. They do this full time. They've been to Disney World. They've been on Disney cruises. They've been to Disneyland. They know this stuff inside and out. So this is a great agency to go with. So I'm going to link their request form specifically for all you DFB viewers out there in the description down below. You can receive a no strings attached quote whenever you'd like. It really is an easy button for a Disney vacation. All right, so do your kids need a break from all the rides or do you need a break from all the rides? Here's a fun and easy alternative for some afternoon entertainment. If you're hanging around one of the Disney World hotels for the day or even just the afternoon, you wanna take some time to check out the daily activities. 
These are a super cool part of Disney World that most people do not even know exists until they've been to Disney World like 50 or 60 times, right? Activities are usually posted on a large board somewhere in or close to the lobby, but you can always ask a front desk cast member for the daily list of activities too. Throughout the week, different hotels will have different crafts. We've seen button art at Grand Floridian, Kukuki nut necklaces to string at Polynesian Village Resort, step-by-step -step painting classes at Riviera Resort. You can make mosaics over at Coronado Springs. Now these little craft activities will usually cost you some souvenir money. I think last time I paid for button art, it was like 10 bucks. I think we did a Mickey tie-dye with my kid for like, yeah, like 10 bucks. And they're only going to be available on certain days. Not every day, but when you do track them down, they make for a fun, non-busy and easy afternoon escape for the whole group. This is especially good for your resort day if you want a day away from the parks. Definitely get the list of activities at the beginning of your trip so that you know which day you want to stay around the resort in the afternoon. And now for the trick that's so easy, it actually scares me a little bit. You're going to want to avoid merchandise lines and I can tell you how. Standing in line is something you're going to do a lot at Disney World. So when you get the opportunity to avoid it, you're going to want to take that, which is why mobile checkout is something you have to know about. Merchandise mobile checkout is available at a few of the bigger stores around Disney World. Want to give it a go? Open your My Disney Experience app, tap on that little three horizontal line menu button at the bottom right hand side of the screen and scroll down to where it says merchandise mobile checkout. From there, you're gonna select the store you're currently in. Now here's the fun part, it's item scanning time. Scan the barcode of your souvenir with your phone and keep doing that until you're ready to check out or until you start hearing your bank account telling you to cool your jets. Once you purchase your items and you're ready to head out the door, show a cast member up at the front your QR code receipt before you exit. They'll give you a bag, you throw your stuff in there, and you're out. Easy? Yes. Too easy even? Dangerously easy maybe? But the first time you realize you can skip those massive lines at checkout because this is still new enough that it's kind of a hidden secret, you will feel like a certified superhero. Believe me. All right, let's go back to the hotels for a little bit because there's a deluxe resort tip that I've been meaning to tell you about for ages. Staying at a deluxe resort has major perks. It also has major price points, but let's put a lid on that can of worms for now and get back to the benefits like the extended evening hours. Extended evening hours give deluxe resort guests the ability to stay in select parks on certain days up to two hours after the parks close for everybody else, meaning more late night rides and lots fewer crowds for you. But wait, that's not the tip. If you stay in a deluxe resort, you're shelling out big cash to do that. So if you'd like, you can always consider doing a split stay where you can stay in a deluxe resort for a few days, then transfer over to a value resort to save a little cash or vice versa. But here's the thing, on the day you check out of your Disney deluxe resort, you can still use your extended evening hours that same night. For example, if you checked out of, say, Disney's Contemporary Resort that morning, and you're going to be sleeping at All Star Music that night, you can still use the extended evening hours benefit one last time. So milk your deluxe room for all it's worth, my friends. Even though you checked out, you were still staying there this morning, so you can use the extended evening hours that night if they're offered. All right, before this next thing is gone for good, you're going to want to know how to experience it in the best way possible. We're talking about the barges. Okay, Harmonious is leaving us next year. During this year's D23 Expo convention, we learned that Harmonious, aka the show we waited years to finally see, will be wrapping up its time in Epcot and letting a new show take the scene. So before this nighttime spectacle leaves us, you'll want to make things easy on yourself and find the best possible vantage point to watch this water pyro projection show in all its glory. For the best view of Harmonious, you'll want to face the barges. Showcase Plaza is going to be your ultimate viewing area, which will put you right up at the entrance of the World Showcase and in between the two main gift shops there. This is where you're going to see the best angle of the show, but keep in mind that A, though you can usually find a last minute viewing spot for Harmonious around the World Showcase, you'll have to get to Showcase Plaza earlier if you want a spot there, since it does fill up fast. I wouldn't get there hours earlier or anything, just a little earlier to secure your spot. And B, sometimes this area might be blocked off for a special event, so you may want to try viewing Harmonious from the backside of World Showcase Lagoon instead, sort of over by the American Adventure Pavilion. All right, next is one of my favorite easy dining hacks of all time, and it's using the dining tip board. You see the tip board section on your My Disney Experience app? 
It's that top left side option of the main list. Yeah, go ahead and make this little function your new BFF because you're gonna be using it quite a bit. The tip board can be useful when it comes to finding out ride wait times or predicted forecasted waits for later in the day. But if you switch over to its dining function, the tip board becomes even more useful. It's gonna show you things like when the next arrival window time for mobile orders at the quick service locations looks like, which restaurants are accepting day of reservations and what places currently have a walk-up wait list open and ready for you to add your name to. That way, instead of running around the parks trying to track down availability at each individual restaurant location or being a walk-up and not having any idea if there's availability, you can learn all about each of them in one convenient spot before you even take a step. Okay, an easy day at Disney is usually synonymous with just being prepared for whatever comes your way, like this next point. Always bring extras. Hair ties snap, sunglasses break and get lost, or you leave them in the pocketed slinky dog dash. I'm just saying this for a friend because there's no way I did that, of course not. Contacts fall out of your eye once in a while. It happens, believe me, it's happened to me. Although these little mishaps can be annoying, they don't have to be hard to combat. Just bring extras along in your park bag, especially for those contacts. You don't wanna lose the only pair you brought with you and be out of luck the rest of your trip. But this tip also goes for shoes and underpants. Just trust me on this, bring extras. Not necessarily into the parks, but you know you, sometimes you might need them, but pack them. I'm serious, shoes and underpants. All right, this next tip isn't just easy to plan for, it's absolutely essential. Disney World transportation is a great perk around the property, but it's not always the quickest way to get from here to there. Particularly speaking, bus transportation. You gotta plan in travel time. If you plan on taking a Disney bus from point A to point B and you know you're gonna be in a hurry to make it to either a dining reservation or rope drop or even to meet up with another group at a certain time, then you can't just show up to the bus stop with only 30 minutes to spare. Hate to kill your vibe, but a bus isn't just gonna be at your stop waiting for you to hop on board. I mean, it could be, if time and luck are on your side, but that's not always gonna be the case. And it may take some time for a bus to finally make its way to you and actually have room for you on the bus. It may even take up to 20 to 25 minutes, depending on the time of day and when the last bus departed. And on top of that, even after you board the bus, you still got 15 to 20 minutes of travel time to factor in, and maybe even more if you're caught in one of the resort's internal bus loops, where the bus will need to make other stops for other guests before getting you to where you need to go. And then on top of that, you have to get to where you're going in the park once you get off the bus. Now, in Epcot, that could mean an extra 20 minutes walk just to get where you need to go. So I always try to aim to be at the bus stop an hour before I need to be somewhere, just so I've got a safety net of time to fall back on if need be. And remember, if you're realizing that you're not gonna make it someplace on time, Get an Uber, get a Lyft, get a minivan. Those are all available to you. Just budget a little bit of overage costs in case you need that. Now here's a trick that actually serves as a lot of tricks packed into one giant point, and that's pack and plan for a festival. If the main goal of your upcoming Disney World trip is to hit up as many of the Epcot festival booths as possible for whichever festival will be going on during your visit, then A, you're a person after my own heart and this is why we're friends, and B, you're gonna wanna pack the following things in your park bag to make sure your festival taste testing day is a breeze. First up, of course, that food tray. Portable food trays allow you to carry more than one food item from booth to booth when you run out of hands. I've been using a tray for years, and every single time I go to a booth with my tray in hand, everyone in the booth is like, that's a great idea. Now, I'm not exactly what you'd call the best juggler in the circus, so I like having that food tray to keep all my food safe while I'm walking around trying to track down a table or, you know, a trash can. If you haven't eaten on a trash can lid during an Epcot festival at least once, have you even been to an Epcot festival? Number two, reusable water bottles. Gotta love the drink that keeps on giving. Reusable water bottles help you stay hydrated as you walk around the entirety of the World Showcase. This is also good if you're drinking around the World Showcase. Keep that water coming. We even got some fun refillable bottles on the DFB Store website. If you head to merch.dfbstore.com, you can bring along a unique water bottle design that'll make other guests go, oh my gosh, where did you get that? Number three, wet wipes and hand sanitizer. Clean hands are happy hands. If you wanna keep your hands all nice and de-germified, when you're heading to the next food booth on your list, keep a pocket-sized bottle of hand sanitizer close by and or a package of wet wipes. Believe me, you don't want to get sick in Disney World and then have to take another week off of work feeling awful, right? Right. 
Number four, gift cards. You don't have to preload Disney gift cards before your tasting extravaganza begins, but these cards will help you keep track of how much you spend on food. Although the food featured at the booths isn't too terribly expensive, it does still tend to add up faster than you'd think. But if you preload a gift card and use it around the fest, you'll be able to keep track of how much you've spent on food so far. Just check the bottom of the food booth receipt and you'll be able to see the remaining amount on your card. You can also add more money to these cards if you decide you want to invest a little extra moolah into your Epcot Fest day. Bonus tip, if you purchase Disney gift cards before you get to the parks, you can end up spending money to earn money. Target red card holders can save 5% off any Target purchases in store or online, which include gift cards. So if you buy a Disney gift card with said membership, you'll spend less than you would if you were to pay for one on Disney World property. And five, DFB printables. One of our very favorite things to do here at DFB is create new printable festival guides for our website. These guides give you an overview of what you can expect to find at each of the food booths before you even step foot in the park, meaning you can have all your must-eats circled and ready to track down ahead of time while you're still back home planning away. These sheets are also available for you to download straight to your phone if you'd like to save on ink and printer paper. And best of all, they are free. However, if you don't mind spending a couple of extra bucks before your big visit, We've also got some super extensive festival guidebooks on the DFB store website, which go into more depth about insider tips, reviews, and money saving tactics, all packed into one guidebook. Can you tell we're passionate about this? Because we are. We take our food festivals very, very seriously. Head to dfbstore.com to pick those up. Now, what happens when something goes wrong after your Disney trip ends? Will those instances still be an easy fix? Well, they can be. So if you lose something in Disney World, there is definitely a standard operating procedure for getting it back. If you leave something behind in your hotel room and you didn't notice until you're well on your way back home, Disney will work to reunite you with your abandoned thingamabob. As soon as you learn something's amiss, head to chargerback.com and fill out a report. If Disney finds your lost item, they'll email you with an update and mail it back to you at no charge. Okay, now which Disney dining hack do you need most of all? Well, this is definitely a contender. It's one of my favorites. If you're having a tough time trying to find a reservation for a certain restaurant, don't give up, not until you search by the hour. When it comes to making dining reservations, whether it be online or through the My Disney Experience app, you'll be given two choices, search by the hour or search by the meal, i.e. breakfast, brunch, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes when you search by the meal, the app will be like, nope, sorry, nothing to see here. But when you look by the hour and and check out those non-peak dining times that don't really fit into a particular category, like between 2 and 4 p.m., you just might strike gold. Also, something I like to do, a little trick, is head over and look for the specific restaurant on the website, and then look for a dining reservation on the specific restaurant page. Why does this sometimes work when you can't find it the other way? I don't know. I cannot tell you, but sometimes it does. So there's lots of different ways to approach the same problem. All right, now that we're talking about dining, I'm starting to get major craving for this next tip, which you can access during certain times of the day, and that is hitting up hot cookie hour. Okay, this is probably the best tip in this whole video, I'm just gonna be honest right now. <laughs> Ever since Gideon's Bakehouse opened its spooky sweet shop doors in Disney Springs, it's been serving up these super thick cookies that people just can't seem to get enough of. No, really, the virtual cues for it still rack up over four hour waits once in a while. But you can make your Gideon's Bakehouse stop even sweeter by timing your visit just right. If you go to Gideon's between either 2 and 3 p.m. or 7 and 8 p.m., you will be there during hot cookie hour. That means you can order a Gideon's cookie fresh out of the oven with a bonus scoop of locally made malt vanilla ice cream, all for 10 bucks. By the way, this may be an easier feat during that 2 to 3 p.m. period since lots of folks will still be in the parks and maybe the locals come out after work to get hot cookie hour. Or so try that 2 to 3 p.m. window. Now, before you stuff your bag full of spaghetti strap tanks and Birkenstocks, there's something you need to know. Please, please, please check the weather forecasts. Orlando weather is hard to pin down, but that doesn't mean you can't have an idea of what to expect during your visit. Go to whatever your favorite weather app or weather website is and check out an extended forecast. You can find charts for each month's regular weather patterns and climates in Orlando. Turns out it is not piping hot all the time, so if you happen to plan your vacation around one of those cooler seasons, like between November and March, remember to pack layers. Those are gonna be super, super useful and important. 
And even during the summer, if you happen to go in for lunch in an air conditioned restaurant, it can get a little chilly, especially with all the sweat evaporating from your skin. So you may even bring a light sweater in your park bag on a regular day if you know you tend to get cold. All right, reality check time. I know you know this next point is important, but do you know how important it really is? Our next easy trick is to take breaks. I know, I know, I know, yuck. Who wants to slow down on a Disney vacation? Okay, me, I wanna slow down on a Disney World vacation because it can be a lot to handle, even for a seasoned pro. Disney World isn't a sprint, it's a marathon, so don't overexert yourself right from day one and lose your steam for the remainder of the parks. Remember I talked about those dehydration headaches? Those will completely destroy the rest of your trip. I'm not even joking. So you need to calm down, slow your roll, take it a little bit easier from the beginning. So try one of these methods. One, book a hotel room close to the park you know you'll be visiting the most. That way you'll be able to leave the park a little bit more easily, buying you time for a quick midday nap. And I know you're telling me right now, AJ, I never nap in the middle of the day. That's wild. It's bizarre. Who does that? During a Disney trip, you might. That's all I'm saying. You might. Number two, plan a break in the middle of your week. Those first two days in the parks can dish out a lot in 48 hours. And I always feel myself kind of dragging on day three if I don't give myself some sort of recharge time frame before jumping straight back into doing it all over again. Now, you don't have to do an entire day off, but you can maybe sleep in on that third day. Explore your hotel, maybe even go to Disney Springs in the morning and lounge around by the pool. Just take it easy for a few hours. Give yourself some time to recuperate. Number three, take breaks while you're still at the park. Don't wanna drive all the way back to your hotel room even though your energy meter is hitting empty? It's not uncommon to experience that low energy midday slump, so use this time to tap out for a bit before you experience ride burnout. Instead, browse one of the air-conditioned gift shops or slip into a quick service with indoor seating or catch one of the inside shows. These are perfect times for like Hall of Presidents, American Adventure, Carousel of Progress, you get the vibe. See a trend? I'm telling you to get out of the heat because this ain't no kitchen. This is a theme park and we are just trying to survive. Nothing will drain your energy faster than the relentless Florida sun. So track down shade and drink your water. All right, tired of paying 12 plus dollars for each meal? At minimum? <laughs> And let me tell you about the easiest, most affordable meal in Disney World. This is how you get the cheapest food on property. You're not gonna find the cheapest food on Disney World property at Magic Kingdom or one of the hotels or even Disney Springs. The cheapest food you can actually get is from McDonald's. Yeah, imagine that. Did you know there's a Mickey D's on Disney World property? It's a pretty swanky one too with solar power awnings and stationary bikes. You know, if you feel like you need to get even more cardio in your Disney day. This McDonald's is located pretty close to the Disney All-Star Resorts office. West Buena Vista Drive, kind of over there by Animal Kingdom. Now you won't be able to take Disney World complimentary transportation to it, but you can drive to it. And though the prices will be a little more expensive than what you might find at your McDonald's back home, you can still grab a cheeseburger here for under three bucks. Not to mention this place stays open until midnight. So if you're in need of a late night meal, then it's time to track down the golden arches. All right, use Instacart. That's my next tip. What if you don't want to hop into your car to get cheap food? What if you want cheap food sent directly to your hotel? That's where Instacart comes into play. Before your Disney World vacation, download the Instacart app and sign up for the free service. There are premium services you can pay for too, but you don't need to buy those. When you're wanting groceries sent your way without having to drive to the nearest Wally World to pick them up yourself, just enter in the address of your hotel on the Instacart app and select the nearby store you're wanting to order from. Next, select the items you want to get, just like you would while browsing the aisles of your local convenience store, then select a delivery date and time. If you aren't able to be there for the delivery arrival time, you can typically pick up your package from the front desk or concierge desk throughout the day. You can also arrange for your groceries to be delivered to your room by calling the concierge desk, but keep in mind that the fee for your Disney hotel to accept packages is $6 per package regardless of whether you pick it up or opt for it to be delivered to your room. Now, I've had Instacart deliver my bags and they're usually with Bell Services and it doesn't cost me anything to have them get those for me so I can take them to my room. So the $6 thing sometimes applies to packages delivered through like Amazon and stuff like that, but I don't usually have that apply to Instacart. Also keep in mind that many stores do require a minimum spending amount, not to mention you'll likely be charged a delivery fee by Instacart and be expected to tip the driver. So they'll break down all those fees 
fees for you before you complete your purchase so you won't be surprised when your card is charged. But in general, if you like to avoid eating at a restaurant on Disney property for every meal, this could still save you big bucks, especially on breakfasts. Speaking of refueling, you're not the only one who's going to need to pick me up. You got to juice those portable chargers every night. Portable chargers are a great way to keep your phone alive and kicking because you're going to need your phone all the time since so many details of your trip are accessed through that My Disney Experience app. But a portable charger isn't going to do you any good if you don't also charge that as well. Chargers don't have unlimited power, so when you're plugging in your phone at the end of each night, do that with your portable chargers too. Disney World also uses the fuel rod system if you'd prefer. Fuel rod charger stations are located around the parks and the hotels and are available when you need to switch out a dead fuel rod for a fully charged one. If you buy a fuel rod at Disney though, through one of those little kiosks, expect to drop 30 bucks for one rod. However, if you pay for a fuel rod on Amazon ahead of time, you may be able to find a pack of two for just over 35. Oh, and don't forget to juice up your Magic Band Plus overnight too if you happen to buy one of those. Okay, but I know you want more queue line tips because wait times can be so tedious, especially when you're in them all day long. So next easy trick, get in line at the end of the night. Let's say there's a super popular ride like Flight of Passage in Disney's Animal Kingdom that has had an extremely long wait time all day long. Instead of splurging for that a la carte lightning lane, which will allow you to bypass a portion of the queue for a surge price per person per ride, you can always try waiting to jump into that main queue until the very end of the night. Even if the wait time extends past the park's closing, you'll still be able to ride as long as you jump into the queue before it closes off for the night. So that's like one minute before the park closes. Now granted, this strategy could be a gamble. If any technical difficulties were to happen while you're waiting for the ride before closing time, you may be out of luck. But if you want to enjoy your park day and not have it interrupted by a forever long midday line, and you don't want to pay extra for that lightning lane, this could be just the strategy you're looking for. Now Flight of Passage is an especially good one to do with this because a lot of people start their day in Animal Kingdom because it's one of the parks that opens the earliest, and then they park hop over to another park. So the line for Flight of Passage actually does get a little bit shorter by the end of that park day. Now, if you're more of an early riser, you can also use the early theme park entry benefit given to all Disney World hotel guests, which gives you 30 extra minutes in the parks every day before they officially open to get in line for whatever ride you want to knock out first. All right, ready to double up on your money savings? Of course you are. Next on our list, researching third-party discounts. Disney relies on a lot of third-party companies to help them bring a vast selection of restaurants to their property, especially in the Disney Springs area. That's a little shocker for a lot of people. People don't realize that Disney doesn't run all their own restaurants. A lot of the restaurants in the parks and in Disney Springs are run by other companies. Now, some of these third parties have memberships you can join to access extra discounts and freebies on special occasions. But don't assume that the membership you join will just help you with savings on a particular Disney restaurant. Some of these programs will unlock easy savings you might not have known previously existed that can help you at restaurants all over the place. Let's take the Landry's Loyalty Program. Now, a membership for Landry's Select Club will come in handy if you plan on eating at one of their restaurants like Rainforest Cafe, T-Rex, or Yak and Yeti. You'll earn one point for every one dollar you spend, and once you gain 250 points, you can get a $25 gift card towards your next meal. 250 points is a lot of money, but it doesn't have to be spent all at once. It can be broken up among several restaurant visits if you happen to have a Landry's restaurant nearby that you go to a lot. You don't even have to spend that much moolah to get free money handed your way. Just wait till your birthday and you'll get an annual $25, no strings attached. But a Landry's membership can also help you save money on rental cars. Landry's Select Club members can earn up to 40% off Hertz rentals and 25% off Avis rentals. This membership does cost a one-time starting fee of $25, bucks, but that money will magically transform into yet another $25 gift card that you can spend on your next Landry's meal. It's always a good idea to look over these kinds of memberships before applying for them, just to make sure you know what kind of club you're actually signing up for because if you don't plan on eating at any Landry's restaurants anytime soon and you're just going to rely on Disney transportation for your upcoming trip then the $25 membership is not worth your time but heads up that there are lots of third-party memberships and there's lots of third parties in Disney World that can offer you savings we calculate all of this we've got it all in a big old discounts and deals chapter in our DFB guide to Walt Disney World dining you can head over to dfbstore.com and check that out whenever you want okay we've got crowds everywhere. So are there any places you can turn to to 
just be alone in Disney World? Okay, we've got some hideouts for you. Disney World can get overwhelming, especially if you're an introvert like me. So take a moment, step away from Galaxy's Edge or Cinderella Castle, and locate one of these easygoing and downright peaceful locations. In Epcot, the World Showcase can buzz with energy, but it also has easy to find spots where you can take a breather. A couple of spots we tend to turn towards are the gardens behind Katsura Grill and the Japan Pavilion, and the Gazebo Gardens area behind the UK Pavilion, as long as there's not a cover band performing or a Mary Poppins meet and greet going on. Though those can also be nice perks to stumble upon, and it doesn't get too crowded back there no matter what. In Magic Kingdom, there's lots of busyness at all times down here, but we can find moments of solitude on Tom Sawyer Island in Frontierland or around the tent-covered rest area in Storybook Circus in New Fantasyland, which bonus also has charging stations. In Disney's Hollywood Studios, lately I felt the most surrounded when I'm at Disney's Hollywood Studios. These narrow walkways don't really leave you with a whole lot of room to spread out but crowd relief can be found inside the Walt Disney Presents exhibit on Animation Courtyard, history and air conditioning, yes please. And if you keep walking on down the Animation Courtyard path straight ahead past the Joffrey's Coffee, you'll also find what appears to be a dead end because it kinda is. Sometimes the Incredibles meet and greets happen around this area, but if they're not happening and the area is still open, you'll find a few stray benches to plop down on and a few hidden secrets back there too. In Disney's Animal Kingdom, that's my happy place, mainly because the crowd levels are usually pretty manageable. But that doesn't mean Animal Kingdom doesn't experience its fair share of packed out days too. So hit up those trails, folks. The Discovery Island Trails, the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail, the Maharaja Jungle Trek. They are serene and beautiful and you get to see animals, so it's a win-win-win. If your goal, however, is to get from, say, Kilimanjaro Safaris to Flight of Passage, there's a really peaceful walkway running between the Africa section and Pandora section that takes you under a bridge and past the river, so who knows, you may even get to see a character flotilla sail on by. Every Disney World park also has a baby care center if your little one needs to eat, rest, get in the AC, or just have a much needed stimulation break. Now there are lots of other relaxing places to go in the parks and I really hope that those of you viewing who've been to Disney World will help us out and go ahead and let us know your favorite places to hide out and relax in the parks in the comments. Now, the goal for these videos is to get you feeling as prepared as possible for your upcoming Disney World trip, but that doesn't mean you won't come across a situation that covers brand new territory. Doesn't mean the solution isn't still easy to find, you just gotta know where to look. So don't be afraid to ask cast members for help. This may feel like a no-duh point, but it's the point that keeps on giving. The DFB team is in the parks every day. We're there every single day. And you know what tends to happen each of those days we're working? We're asking a cast member for advice. Cast members are trained to know their stuff, and even if you come up with a question that stumps them, they'll know which direction to point you for a more solid answer. The key is to not take advantage of our friendly neighborhood cast members. Though they may be able to give you advice on where to stand for the fireworks or how to get from point A to point B, if you catch them in the middle of like directing loads of traffic around Main Street USA right before Disney Enchantment is about to begin, then just leave them alone. Go find another cast member who might be able to help you. If someone's busy, there's lots of other cast members around that you might be able to ask. All right, this next point gets pretty specific, but I think it'll come in handy for a lot of us. And that's ditch the pin lanyard. Okay, quick point here for all my Disney pin traders or future Disney pin traders. Pin lanyards are super fun, but they can be a real pain if you plan on filling them up with a lot of really nice, really pricey, really heavy pins. They clink together when you walk, they knock loose and fall on the sidewalk, and they get kind of hot around your neck. Instead, consider getting a window bag. Window bags are like any old backpack or purse, but they have a clear plastic front that allows you to show off your prized collection. Even if a pin falls off, it's not the end of the world, it'll just fall into your bag and you can repin it later on. You can find these at Disney World, but you may find cheaper versions at your local mall or online. Oh, and a bonus pin tip for you from Bria, our resident pin trader. Invest in metal butterfly clasps for your pins instead of those flimsy Mickey shaped pin backs. The butterfly clasps will hold your pins in place lots better and only cost four to five dollars for a whole pack at any nearby craft store. All right, ready for party time? Our next tip is not forgetting about the holiday parties. Even if you're not too big on festive celebrations while you're at Disney World, the Magic Kingdom After Hours parties can be a major, major useful 
thing to keep on your radar. Three key reasons why. Reason one, the party is capped off to a limited number of guests, meaning all those ride lines that were packed out earlier in the day are now super short, if not complete walk-ons. Reason two, if you book tickets early enough for these events, not only will they cost the same price as a regular day ticket, but you can enter the park three hours before the party kicks off, meaning you can still spend a full eight hours in the park while skipping the heat of the day. And reason three, whether you're in the festive spirit or not, it's still fun to take part in all the exclusive offerings like the parades, the nighttime spectaculars, the character meet and greets, and fun extras like trick-or-treating during Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party or dancing in Snope down Main Street USA during Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. So if this is something you're interested in doing, make sure to jump on those tickets ASAP. Though Mickey's Not So Scary is now sold out for this year, there are still several dates available for the Christmas party, per the release of this video, that is. All right, fun fact, there are things in Disney World you can buy for a buck or less. Don't believe me? Prepare to be amazed. So this next tip is knowing where to get that $1 or less upgrade. What better way to show your food a little love than by jazzing it up with relatively inexpensive upgrades, right? Here are some of our favorite $1 upgrades for snacks. One, a shot of frosting at Gideon's. You don't even have to use it on your cookie or cake slice. Just eat it straight from the cup because it's that good. Number two, a cup of queso at Pecos Bill Tall Tail Inn and Cafe Inn. Magic Kingdom. Number three, a donut bun for your sandwiches at Everglazed Donuts and Cold Brew in Disney Springs. Don't knock it till you try it. Number four, additional toppings on your customized popcorn at Main Street Confectionery in Magic Kingdom. And number five, add a flavor shot of syrup like caramel, hazelnut, vanilla, or a seasonal offering for cold brews and coffees at Westward Ho in Magic Kingdom. This one's actually only 50 cents, but I wanted to give it the shout out anyways. All right, let's ditch the $1 items for a bit and talk about something even better, free stuff. Next on our list is finding free breakfast. So Disney World hotels aren't really into the whole continental breakfast scene, but some of their neighboring hotel friends are. If an included hot breakfast is an important factor for you when making a decision about where to stay on your Disney vacation, there are a handful of good neighbor hotels out there that do offer breakfast spread each morning free of charge. You'll just have to do a little research and track them down, but you can find the list of offerings on the Good Neighbor Hotel website. Now, free breakfast goes beyond the Good Neighbor Hotels too. There are hundreds of Orlando hotel offerings in the area that you can look into for those eggs and bacon benefits as well. But Good Neighbor Hotels directly partner with Disney World to make sure their guests are still getting similar perks that they might receive while staying directly on Disney property, and in some cases, offering much lower price tags too. Remember what I said about memberships earlier? They come in handy here as well. For example, if you book a room for Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resorts and you happen to be a Marriott Rewards member, they'll often give you breakfast credits here, which you can use for free morning grub. Now, I may be a bit biased here, but I think this next tip could be the best trick of the bunch. Even better than hot cookie hour? Maybe, depending on what you're looking for. If you want access to thousands of pages of Disney dining information, whenever and wherever you'd like, we can do that for you. We've created package bundles of all our dining guides into one convenient price point, which is gonna save you a whole lot of money rather than paying for each of them one by one. Head over to dfpstore.com, choose which guidebook bundle will be the most beneficial for you, and then before you check out, save even more money by typing in promo code YouTube and applying a discount to your purchase. It's easy as one, two, three, and remember there's a 100% money back guarantee on any of our guides. If it doesn't work for you, you don't like it, let us know, we'll pay you back. Okay, let's get back to the party scene. Keep track of sneaky holidays. It's easy to pinpoint the big time celebrations like Halloween and Christmas, but don't forget to check on those other specialty events and celebrations that'll spike crowd levels too. A few events throughout the year that you'll wanna be on the lookout for are the Run Disney races. Those usually happen on four different weekends throughout the year. Smaller holidays like Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day and nationwide recognized three-day weekends like Labor Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend, Columbus Day weekend, Martin Luther King. Though you can still navigate these crowds like you usually would, don't be caught off guard if things are a little more happening than usual. All right, did you know there are apps you can use during your Disney World trip outside of the Disney created ones? 
And no, I'm not talking about social media platforms, though I guess that's still technically true. Let's talk about mobile ordering even outside the My Disney Experience app. Mobile order is super useful inside the Disney parks, but your mobile order capabilities don't have to solely rely on your MDE app. If you start craving an Everglaze donut while you're walking around Disney Springs, you can place your order on their website to skip the physical line. You'll also be able to add special requests for your orders too, within reason, of course. The Disney Springs Starbucks locations in the Marketplace area and the West Side area also use mobile order. So now you can order your green tea with lemonade and three pumps of raspberry syrup in no time. Sorry, you don't have to order that, but Bria does recommend it. Now just keep in mind that the Starbucks locations inside the parks like Main Street Bakery and Magic Kingdom and Trolley Car Cafe and Hollywood Studios do not have mobile order. Sad day. But wait, there's more. The swanky award-winning barbecue quick service, The Polite Pig, also has mobile ordering capabilities. You can find their easy to navigate online system through their website, politepig.com. All right, I'm super curious how many people have ever come across this next scenario before. This is a very specific one, but I came across it just recently and had to share. I just finished riding Star Tours over in Disney's Hollywood Studios, and it was a good time. Got to see R2-D2 and fly across the red sands of Crate. Now, if you've been on Star Tours, you know that this screen-based attraction requires 3D glasses. You pick up a pair before you ride, you drop them off in a bin before you leave. But a lady in front of me confused her real sunglasses for her 3D ones, so she accidentally put the 3D ones on her head and threw her actual glasses in the bin. Fortunately, this is an easy mistake to fix. If the glasses are still on top, you can reach back in the bin and grab them. Easy peasy. But if they manage to fall down into the pit of 3D glasses despair and they blend in with all the other glasses in there, flag down a nearby cast member to come lend a helping hand. To prevent this from happening to you, try putting your regular sunglasses in your bag or tucked in your shirt collar so you don't get them swapped around. Now, it's wild to think that sometimes the easiest tricks can be figured out just by looking on a map. Of course, you got to know where the bathrooms are. If someone in your group has got to go to the bathroom and they've got to go right now, then it's good to know where Disney restrooms are located before you're in panic or emergency mode. Lucky for you, there are a ton of restrooms on Disney World property, but here are some of the least crowded ones we've discovered over the years. In Magic Kingdom, most guests will make a P line, I mean B line, Sorry, we shouldn't say that. To the tangled restrooms when they're in fantasy land. And for good reason, gotta support our girl Rapunzel, even from the porcelain throne. But many folks don't know about the bathrooms just a few ahead, tucked away behind Gaston's tavern. They're private, they're spacious, they have the Gaston's seal of approval if that means anything to you. Over in Epcot, you can take a journey into imagination with Figment, quickly followed by a journey to one of the best restrooms in Epcot. To the left of the Imagination Pavilion, you can track down fairly quiet bathrooms before heading off on your next big adventure in the World Celebration area. In Hollywood Studios, there's not a whole lot going on in the animation courtyard currently, but the restrooms next to Star Wars Launch Bay are usually pretty quiet. And in Disney's Animal Kingdom, if you're heading to that walkway I mentioned earlier, the one that connects Africa and Pandora, you can find a beautiful restroom right outside the Festival of the Lion King Theater. Well, at least they labeled it beautiful. Know where restaurants are located, too. If there's a must-do restaurant on your list during your Disney World vacation, make sure the day you decide to make reservations for it makes sense sense. Let me hit you with another example here. Let's say you're hitting up all four parks on this trip, but you also want to make sure you're adding the table service restaurant Ohana to your itinerary since you heard it's got a Lilo and Stitch meet and greet during breakfast and you know your kids are going to lose their ever-loving minds over that. You're not going to want to book Ohana on a day you've also got a park pass for say Epcot or Disney's Animal Kingdom. You can do that, I won't stop you, but Ohana is located in Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, a Magic Kingdom area resort, so it'll be so easy for you to hop on a monorail and make your way to the front gate of Magic Kingdom right after breakfast, whereas you'll have to dip into a lot of extra travel time to get to other parks after your meal. So yeah, you kind of have to become a logistics master to make sure you're not wasting extra time on your Disney trip. All right, time for some more food tips because you can't ever have enough of those. If you're trying to track down vegan options on the quick service menus, Disney's going to make it easy for you. When you go to mobile order from a quick service on the My Disney Experience app, you'll notice a list of icons at the very top of the menu. These could range from snacks, entrees, specialty beverages, even holiday exclusive options. But if you tap on the little leaf, you'll be taken straight to the plant-based selections on the list. If you decide to wait in a regular line instead of mobile order, these leaves should also pop up next to vegan-friendly options on the physical menu too. 
All right, next, Disney World is truly a place that can be experienced by the whole family. And by whole family, I mean even your fur babies. If you don't want Fido missing out on a Disney vacation, to make things easier so you don't keep worrying about your little floof while you're on vacation, you can get them a room at the Best Friends Pet Care Resort. Yep, there's a Disney hotel for pets. There are different pricing packages you can choose from depending on what you're wanting, but keep in mind that some of these nightly options can get as pricey as a standard room at a value resort. You can learn more about services and the required documentation you'll need to provide ahead of time on the Best Friends Pet Care website. Also, if you'd rather keep your doggo by your side even while you're at a Disney hotel to save some money on boarding, there are four pet-friendly Disney World hotels that are part of an ongoing pilot program. These include Art of Animation Resort, Port Orleans Resort Riverside, Yacht Club Resort, and the cabins at Fort Wilderness. Disney does ask that your dogs are well-behaved, vaccinated, and kept on a leash in public areas. Again, you can learn more about bringing your pooch with you on the Disney World website, but keep in mind that a maximum of two dogs are allowed to stay with you. You will need to pay a pet fee. Dogs cannot go into the parks unless they are certified service animals, and many areas around the hotel will still need to stay canine-free to protect those who might have allergic reactions to your four-legged friend. All right, you feel that? It is tension leaving your body now that you know Disney World can be tackled head on without all the extra stress. Feel free to tell us your favorite easy to navigate Disney tips in the comments. You never know who could wind up being helped out by you sharing your best kept pro planning secret. And don't forget to drop your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash easy tricks so we can get this entire list to you, which will make your Disney travel planning very easy. You know that everybody who watches these videos is so benefited by your tips and tricks as well. We've all been to Disney World a bunch of times and we've all had different experiences and learned different things on the way. Thanks for listening everyone and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.